uh, or paragraph number. If you are having technical difficulties, please use the chat function in Google Meet to alert the meeting or dial in on the phone number and using the PIN provided within the invite. Please do not use the chat function for putting formal questions to the committee or make any other comments and any persistent disruptive behaviour will result in removal. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, yeah, so I think the members are aware of the, the, the way to conduct the meeting. I, uh, I just say I am I am logged in separately, so I will be able to see hands raised um, electronically for those of you not present in the council chamber. If I can start then with um, uh, apologies for absence. On your seat, chair. Okay. Um, declarations of interest. Are there any interests that uh, members need to declare? No, there's none of those. I've not been aware of any urgent business, but if, uh, so I'll note that. Move on to item four. If the, I've not, there's no additional items to be considered. In, oh, we have actually. We've got one item. We'll have to go into um, a, a, to exclude the press and public from at the end of the meeting, where we will get a report back on the um, uh, on the framework agreements that have been let. Um, but uh, and also we can deal with any questions on exempt appendices at that point as well. Okay, item five, nothing under item five. If I could take um, item six, unrestricted minutes of the previous meeting of Cabinet and Procurement and Insourcing Committee on the 19th of July. Um, can I take those as a true record? I won't go through them page by page, but please indicate if there's any issues with them. No, Chair. Okay, minutes agreed. 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 Okay. Okay. Item seven has been, um, well, not withdrawn, it's been deferred, I think, to our next meeting. Item eight, then, uh, send independent and non-maintained school placement pseudo-dynamic purchasing system. Uh, is an officer going to introduce this? Hello? Hello, I'm attending with um, Jay Wilson, he's the head of Send, and Jay's going to be presenting the report to you today. Thank you. Uh, thank, thanks, uh, Lauren. Thank you, Chair. Um, so obviously coll colleagues will have uh, read, read the, re the report. Um, essentially, um, what, what we're doing here and what we're asking for is we've been doing lots of work um, previously on our independent um, and non-maintained special school uh, placements. Um, the first piece of the work uh, that we're doing was making sure that um, all of our settings in the independent sector um, and all of our children with education, health and care plans to attending have a um, contract in place um, that details uh, the reasons they're attending, um, how we'll be funding that placement and, and any other factors that we think are important. Um, so this report is the next stage in, in our process. Um, so we're wanting to establish um, a PDPS uh, um, in order to lead to a compliant route um, to market when we're securing independent and non-maintained special school settings. Um, we're seeking approval for um, a three-year um, contract um, with a value of £4.5 um, uh, million. Uh, pounds. Um, in the paper is various details about the amount of um, children we've got in independent settings. Um, the benefit of this system is that it's a flexible system so that um, we can spot purchase, but if we are spot purchasing, purchasing an individual placement, um, we can then get that the provider onto our system. Um, once they're on the system, the PDPS, um, then compliance um, can be implemented by use it using the system. Um, so it's um, a good way for us to procure those placements in a way that's compliant. Um, that's essentially it. Lauren, is there anything you wanted to add? Um. No, other than the PDPS is a new model, it, it's um, slightly different to a traditional DPS in that it means we have more flexibility to make the process easier for schools to join because based on the research that we've done so far, there have been barriers with this particular market in terms of engagement with traditional DPS models, which is why we've selected this model in particular. Okay, thank you very much. Are there any questions from um, members? 
not, not a so much as Council Woodley. Uh, comment in that I, I know that an extraordinary amount of work has gone into the run-up to this um, proposal um, and that we, whilst it, there's not a sort of savings objective embedded firmly in it, there is an opportunity there also to, to make the process kind of fairer and more open and transparent and accountable and I absolutely welcome that. So thank you very much for everyone to put all the work into it. Thank you and I, I would absolutely echo that. I had a, a couple of uh, quick questions. Um, just that, uh, as a non-specialist, I sort of struggled initially to work out what this was all about. Um, I, as far as I see it, it's a sort of uh, framework agreement of sorts where people are brought in and out again. Uh, I think the question is, uh, how in practice does it differ from spot purchasing? Because people can come and people can go, if you know what I mean. Did you want me to take that question, Jay? Um, Thanks, Laura. Yeah. <laughs> so the pseudo DPS model differs from a framework in that we can accept scores onto the DPS at any point and it means that our um, call-off procedure can operate in a way where the placement is made at the school which is driven in large by citizen choice and then we will put a contract in place with the school and it will allow us to manage things like fee uplift so the call-off procedure is slightly backwards to a, a traditional DPS model. Okay, so people can come in and come onto it very easily. Why is yeah. that? How's that? How, what, what essentially makes it different from spot purchasing? It 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 means that the schools See what will I mean all by be that. signed it's up. Very flexible. To, it? Yes, it's flexible, but they'll all be signed up to the same contract terms and conditions which will mean that we can manage, as I say, things like fee uplifts a lot easier than what we can do now. So it's a streamlined approach to the contract that we're signing up to with them. Okay, thank you. That's, that's helpful. Uh, the, other, the last question, the other question I had was in uh, 5.4.2 paragraph, you say um, it allow, will allow for further development um, on, in, of in-house provision. Now, I know there's been considerable work done on this already, but when you talk about further development of in-house provision, what, what was that you had in mind? Because that's something we would very much support, obviously. Uh, thank you, Chair. So we, we have a, quite a, um, a large school estate strategy at the moment looking at our special school placement. Um, so lots of plans to exp expand our local provision. Um, we've already expanded a couple of our additional resource provisions attached to mainstream schools, and we have plans to extend all our special school placements as well. Obviously, that takes time um, because it's tied up in different parts of the school estate, but very much we have, have the commitment that we want to grow our own provision rather than using um, out-of-borough provision. Good. Okay. okay. Um, if there are any other comments or questions... Uh, otherwise, can we move to the recommendation, which is recommendation 3.1, to seek approval to establish the three-year pseudo-dynamic purchasing system? Can we agree that? Agreed. Agreed. Thank you very much. Thanks again to the officers for presenting that. And as I say, we really appreciate all the hard work that's gone into that. So thank you. Um, item nine, the uh, insourcing market stalls operations. Can I ask um, if an officer is going to present this, please? Hello Chair, yes that's me, good evening and good evening uh, committee members. Uh, my name is Kevin Keady, I'm the Head of Service for the Council's Parking Markets and Street Trading Service and I'm joined this evening by Dan O'Sullivan who's the Service Area Manager for Market Shopfront and Street Trading. Um, so just to give you a summary of the proposal, um, the, the Council's much loved street markets have remained a cornerstone of Hackney's communities for generations. They play an integral part of Hackney's identity, providing approximately 20,000 pitches on street to facilitate the wide array of the borough's diverse traders and their commodities, as well as giving Hackney's residents and visitors valued interaction and engagement with each other alongside unique shopping experiences. Over the past five years, the Council's market service has transformed the performance of its street markets, making them more attractive for traders and customers alike, growing pitch occupancy, regularizing its trading regime, and stabilizing its financial performance, achieving break-even position for the first time in 2017, and every year since until the pandemic, having previously carried deficits of over £1 million. The service has received industry recognition, winning multiple awards from both the National Board of Markets and the Mayor of London for its exceptional management and support of Hackney's young people and entrepreneurship. 
The service continues to seek growth opportunities in supporting fledgling businesses and startups, as well as managing its operating costs and carving out savings where possible in order to achieve maximum efficiency and value for money for the organisation. The council does not currently have a universal contractual agreement with an external service provider for erecting and dismantling street market stalls. Market stall setup services have been operated by a number of both contracted and non-contracted operators since first being outsourced in 2013. In 2019, officers carried out a procurement exercise to formalize this process and de-risk the service by putting in place a dedicated universal operator to undertake all stall setup services across the borough. The successful bidder was delayed in commencing work for the council whilst pandemic restrictions prevented markets from opening. Once restrictions were lifted and markets began reopening, officers discovered that the important formality regarding the signing of the contract had yet to be completed. The bidder refused to sign the contract and subsequently attempted to renegotiate its terms. A temporary contract was agreed to avoid disruption to the service as the council could not at that stage step in to run the service itself. The service has therefore undertaken a comprehensive review of the arrangements for the setup and takedown of stalls at the mar uh, council's market in line with the Mayor's 2018 manifesto and the commitment set out within the sustainable procurement strategy to review all outsourced services with a view to bring them in-house and has concluded that insourcing is now the, in the best interest of the council as well as market traders. The proposal to insource the functions of the setting up and taking down the stalls and related equipment on the council's markets will result in significant cost savings of an estimated £351,000 over the next five years the creation of up to 29 posts, providing employment opportunities for local people to work directly for the council, a consistent, transparent and equitable service provision for market traders, and eliminating the risk of markets being unable to trade based on reliability of third party contractors and the legacy of informal arrangements to deliver this special service throughout the year. It gives me great, great pleasure, therefore, to invite the Cabinet Procurement and Insourcing Committee to approve the recommendations set out in the report to insource the setup and take down of stalls and relate equipment at the council's market, which will generate savings, create employment within the council, and improve service delivery. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Are there any comments or questions from mem members? Uh, Councillor Kennedy and then Councillor Bramble. Councillor uh, Kennedy. Thank you. Really happy, obviously, um, as the name of this committee suggests, to welcome insourcing wherever possible. Um, my one concern is about possible legal challenge from the previous contractor. Can I have reassurance that we are um, uh, sound in our um, ability to defend any such challenge should it arise? No problem. If I just ask Dan to take that question, he'll be able to give you the assurance you're looking for, Councillor Kennedy. Yeah, thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Councillor Kennedy. Um, the Previous contractor, um, upon refusing to sign the contract, um, also refused to sign the short-term agreement that was in place. Uh, we settled up all um, existing invoices for the work that they did undertake, um, and then they provided us with a written submission that they were exiting the process and leaving the council, which left us no alternative but to then pursue a short-term agreement with a, another operator whilst we carried out this process. Um, this was all done in conjunction with council legal services and th there's little to no risk of any legal challenge from the previous operator. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Councillor Bramble. Thank you, Chair. In the first um, option that was uh, considered and rejected, you mentioned KPIs, I couldn't find that. Uh, comment in the other options. So just some reassurance around looking at the KPIs in relation to the effects of the pandemic was one to welcome sourcing. And I know that um, as part of this, um, officers and Deputy Mayor Nicholson have been working and talking to, to traders as well. And just some reassurance that you can keep that line of communication going through the process where appropriate and possible. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Well, unfortunately, I didn't catch um, some of that because of the audio quality is a bit echoey. So, I, I, if, if, it's, if it's possible, is it possible to re repeat that question? Do, do you mind, Captain? So it was. It was. 
In the first option that was considered and rejected, it mentioned KPIs, but in the other option I didn't hear or see anything in relation to the KPIs. So it's just a reassurance that in light of the pandemic, that that is reflected the KPIs. Uh, to welcome in sourcing, it's something that we champion and advocate as a council. And I know that Jefferson, Nicholson, uh, myself, and especially the mayor, have um, always wanted engagement with, with, store, with um, stallholders. So just saying that as the process continues, that continued commitment to make sure that we are talking to traders as part of the process, as and where it is appropriate. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Bram. <laughs> Excuse me, Councillor Bram. I, I, I did manage to hear that one that time. Um, in terms of KPIs, I mean the key thing for us in the market service, and Bram will comment on this as well, I'm sure, is to ensure that we, we have confidence that um, every day that we're trading on the street in markets in their various um, you know, different locations, that we can rely on the the stalls being set up. So there is a bit of a um, a mixed. Um, approach to this in different markets, certain trading spots, traders bring their own stalls or have their own setups and you know they work with us um, to ensure that they're you know they're fit for purpose and they're safe and all the rest of it um, and in some uh, cases in certain locations traders bring their own kit we, you know we won't impose this on traders but in many markets where traders rely upon us to provide um, you know the infrastructure, the stalls and everything else um, by, by doing this, this insourcing exercise one of the big benefits to the traders is they're treated fairly, transparently, and equitably. So, you know, what we charge them and what we're offering them is the same for every trader. Uh, every trader, they're all treated the same if they want to come to the market service um, and they want to provide a store for them to go out and, you know, trade to customers um, during the day, then we're happy to uh, provide that to them, uh, the same as we would any other trader. So, um, in nearly every case, because we, we allow, we don't impose it on traders. Traders are, um, can bring their own um, kit, as, as mentioned, but those that don't, because we, we take that um, consistent approach, then the feedback that we've had from traders has been very much welcomed. We've had lots of in, informal stories in the, that we are unable to substantiate over the years, um, where traders have indicated that they haven't been treated fairly in the past by different market operators, not the council. So that's why this particular approach um, from the traders' perspective is, is most welcome. And the key KPI for us, of course, is that the market is set up on time for those traders to set their stalls out quite literally and they can get on and, and serve customers throughout the day and then we can um, have confidence that we can pack it up all at the end of the day. Um, the, our cleansing teams can come in and leave, leave the street and markets uh, in, a, in the state that were found in the morning. So, But Dan, I'll, I'll just ask you briefly if you wanted to add on anything to that in answer to uh, Councillor Bramble's question there. Yeah, thanks Kevin. Yeah, just to add confidence, Appendices 6 um, details the uh, KPI process in which will be undertaken if successful for the in-source service. In addition to that, um, as many members are aware, we meet with many of the we meet with all of our trader groups uh, regularly, generally every four to six weeks, um, on a number of operational or strategic meetings. Uh, in addition, we also meet with many of the, the local resident groups and, and other business groups as well. Um, we welcome feedback. Having the opportunity to, uh, as we've not had previously, to kind of share feedback and um, take feedback on the setup and dismantling of our market operations, having it insourced and having those regular conversations with our key stakeholders will actually provide an additional layer of transparency, uh, an opportunity to continue to improve the service that we haven't previously held. Thank you. Thank you, Chair, and thank you, officers, for your work on this. Thank you. Um, well, can I also thank officers? Um, um, it's good to see this report where we're bringing services back in-house and uh, operating it in a more effective way and saving money. So uh, I think um, uh, it's, it's to be welcomed. So if I can move to the recommendations. Now, I think we're asked to approve 3.1, which is to approve the insourcing uh, and in respect of the other um, items three two onwards to note them rather than approve because I think some of them are the, without you know they're not for us to approve so if we can approve item three one and note item three two on approved then mate. Approved. okay approved thank you all very much for that now uh, the remaining items are on the com on confidential agenda we have three report backs in respect of items that previously been to the committee which just uh, set out how delegated approval was exercised and a couple of um, exempt appendices can I just check whether any members wish to ask a question or comment on any of those 
if you do, don't because if you do, I'd have to exclude them. Okay, so can we just note them? Noted, Chair. Noted. Thank, Thank you all very much indeed. Then um, it says dates of future meeting here. This Whenever the next one's arranged yeah. for. Yeah. <laughs> so, thank you all very much indeed for your attendance. Thanks, yeah.